Welcome to the CN Show, the voice of the world community. This evening, we have here, we have Professor Amin Ra, and we got Brother Mishinda chiming in right now too. But Professor Ra is our, what I consider, our master teacher of the, the platform. He's also the host of Conscious Corner on Mondays. We hear almost every Monday. It's rare that we miss. And we also hear on every Wednesday. We also have Brother Machinda here. He's almost here every single time. And he's a, a buddy of mine that grew up with me. Matter of fact, he's like an older brother, just a few years. And uh, he, know, he has known me all of my life. <laughs> and very instrumental in my development and growth as a person. And, uh, and I continuously listen to his commentary and uh, it's a lot of good information he provides for us. But he's he now he he was in Compton with with us, but now he resides in uh, Louisiana. And uh, he's doing a lot of good work there. He's a college administrator. And so we it's always good to have him here. And then I'm, of course, Rotsky Mascani. I'm the host of this platform. And then sometimes Professor Rob will host if I'm not able to. So this is a, basically a family type platform and we aim to educate and hopefully we, we are doing a service that helps people and that's the, the aim of what we do. So this evening, or we have a reoccurring guest, brother name is Damian McCalman. Met him a couple of years ago and he does a program called Elevate Your Game, which is an excellent program that is offered in high schools. And he can tell us more about that. So the first time he came on, he talked about his program. Second time he came on, it was a real treat for us. He brought his mom. And that's always excellent to have our parents around, especially doing something like this. And it's, it's always a treat for me to see that. Two excellent shows. So he's back for a third time. And the topic is character or color. How do we want to be judged? I think that's a very pertinent title or topic for this evening. So, Brother Damien, I'm glad you're back. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? And then I have an initial question for you before you start your presentation. Nice. All right. Welcome, awesome, brother. Thank you for having me again. It's always a joy and pleasure to hang out with you men. Uh, I was thinking about that earlier, just, you know, being around uh, seasoned men uh, <laughs> is a treat for me, something that I always uh, wanted to do. And this is how I've learned and grown over the years uh, to become a man, because uh, I was raised, you know, by a single mother. Uh, and I think one of the things that she would always tell me is that I can raise you to be a responsible adult. Uh, I don't know if I can raise you to be a man necessarily. So she she took the position of just raising me to be a uh, responsible adult, uh, a responsible person. Uh, so uh, as he said, I, I, I work for an organ organization, a uh, nonprofit organization called Elevate Your Game, where we do uh, where we facilitate mentoring programs on high school campuses in Compton, Long Beach. Uh, we've done it in the Crenshaw area, Crenshaw High School in View Park, uh, West Adams, Frederick Douglass High School, uh, and also in Linwood at Linwood and Fireball. Uh, but re uh, right now, I'm running a program at Centennial, Long Beach Poly, Long Beach Wilson, and we're looking to start something at Locke High School. Uh, coming up real soon. So I've been doing that for about 10 years, doing this for about 10 years. Uh, and it's been a pleasure and it's a joy to just be able to interact with youth uh, on a positive level and help them grow and develop uh, throughout their high school years. So uh, other than that, I'm a husband of 12 years, I think. <laughs> Uh, but also a father of three. I have a 10 year old, a seven year old and a five year old, two boys and one girl. So uh, that's just a little bit about myself. Okay. 
very interesting. So the topic, I yes. want you to, to explain the topic, but specifically the part, how do we want to be judged? Okay. Can you kind of elaborate on what you mean by that? Yes. So, uh, you know, just this, just this idea uh, came to me many years ago, usually around Dr. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s ho holiday. I usually spend some time just, you know, trying to go back and listen to some of his speeches uh, and sermons, uh, just so I can really get a feel of who he was and, you know, throughout his public work. Uh, of course, the I Have a Dream speech is probably the most publicized and recognized. So uh, part of that speech, he has a line in that speech where he says, I have a dream that my four little children will one day grow, uh, will live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. So, you know, that that always stuck out to me. And I always just had the idea or the thought of, Today, you know, how do how do, do we still align? Do we align ourselves up with that thought, you know, or it it to me it sort of seems like uh, at least this generation lead with color, you know, like see me for not see me for who I am, but color has been it seems like the 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 lead of all that we do in this generation and you know when i talk to students on high school campuses is you know their first in a negative sense their first reason as to why things are not going their way is because well i'm black and then i'm like could it be something else and even some adults that i talk to uh it it seemed like they were they were always pushing uh, sort of the color first and character second. And so in listening to Dr. King, it was like, I wonder, you know, 60 years later, we're almost 60 years later to the date of his giving that speech. Where are we at today? How do we ourselves uh, individually want to be judged? Uh, and how do we think we as a people, you know, want to be judged? Okay, so judge... By who? By what? I mean, what do you mean by how do we want to be judged? Okay, so I'll say judged by society, uh, judged by just whoever is looking at us and making judgments about us. Okay, so uh, when when I think about that, mm -hmm. um. It's like, should we worry about people actually judging us mm -hmm. or, you know, or specific, just uh, either an individual or a person of color, or, you know, or of a different ethnic group? Mm -hmm. It's like, so why are we focusing on other people's thoughts about yeah. us? And I would I mean, say, yeah, like, how do we want to be seen? I mean, yeah. you know. Kind of talk a little bit more about that, and then I want to go to. Uh, I don't know if you have more to to add to that. Yes, but we, but yeah, just just a little bit more on that. Got you. So I'll I'll say this. Um, you know, going back and listening to the speech, of course, it was nineteen uh, sixty three, right? So times were different, and I, I had to listen to the whole speech again just to see you know, what his 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 focus was or his aim was, right? So I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go through uh, some key words that stood out, stood out to me throughout his speech. And then I think, because uh, you asked a question about does it matter? And I think, you know, when we ask, when I ask our youth, does it matter? Their answer is really no. It don't matter what people think of me, right? Uh, but we know in reality that that's not a good thing thought to have because at some point you know I'm here because you uh formed an opinion about me or and a conclusion uh came to a conclusion about me that I could add some value or benefit to what you guys do so it's like you know your opinion of me matters 
uh, all the Europeans and we matter. But, you know, in talking to our youth, there's like they don't see it like that until you really get into it and explain it. Uh, but, you know, so at the time he was dealing with segregation and discrim discrimination. Uh, I'm just pulling words out of his speech. Uh, segregation and discrimination. He talked about poverty. He talked about the inalienable, un un unalienable rights of life, liberty, and, and the pursuit of happiness. Uh, he talked about freedom and justice. Uh, he talked about racial injustice being a quicksand. And then he talked about the solid rock of brotherhood. You know, he, he used those two as sort of a, uh, these, these are the two things that we're dealing with. Racial injustice, uh, or we can have a brotherhood. Racial injustice is quicksand. Brotherhood is a solid rock. He talked about justice for all of God's children. He talked about freedom and equality, citizenship rights. Uh, one, one thing that stood out to me too throughout the speech was he said, white only signs uh, strips blacks of their selfhood and their dignity. And like that, that blew my mind. Just that thought of one seeing a sign <laughs> that says whites only. You know, I wasn't born during that time, so I couldn't even imagine seeing a sign that said whites only. But he said, you know, that sign in itself strips Blacks of their selfhood, uh, which is the quality that constitutes their individuality, uh, the state of having their individual in, uh, identity, and it robs them of their dignity. He said it robs them of their the state of the quality of being worthy of honor or respect, right? So it's like just seeing a sign, posting a sign up says, does all of that in his mind to blacks who would read it. Uh, he talked about justice and righteousness. He talked about the American dream. Uh, he talked about all men being created equal. Again, this brotherhood. Uh, he said, sons of slaves sitting with the sons of slave owners. He was like, that's the dream. That's what he wants to see. Uh, we're sisters and brothers, black boys and white girls holding hands together as a brotherhood and, and as sisterhood. Uh, he talked about, you know, I'm just going through the speech again, uh, this faith. So he, he's leaning on his faith and he believes that this is why he sees this. Uh, but then also, even before he got into the speech, uh, which I think is the root of this question, maybe, and it says that he was introduced as uh, the moral leader of the nation. So I believe that everything that he said after that came from this place of his morals. So, you know, for me, you know, when we talk about, you know, content or color, which one do we want to be judged by? You know, is it, is it, do you want me, do you want to be judged by just first things first? You know, I think, you know, in the natural, first thing first, when I walk in the room, you're going to see me as a black man. But don't judge me by that. You know what I mean? That could be negative, negatively or positively. Get to know me, know my character. You know what I mean? Because some people could have a negative uh, thought of black men. That's their issue. That's their problem. But then some could just, want to do more for me because I'm black. And I'm like, you could be hurting yourself by that. So it's like, you know, how do we as individuals want to be judged? Do we want our color, our ethnic group to be the, the judging factor or our character? And I'll say this, I asked uh, some students of mine in our programs, you know, what do they want to be judged by? And of course, these are high school kids. And, you know, an overarching number of them said character. But I know you're judging me by my color. You know, they was like, I want to be judged by character, but I know that people judge me by color. So therefore, I'm accepting that. And whatever comes with that is what comes with it. But I had one young man said, I wish he, he's from Chicago. Uh, he he said he got in a lot of trouble in Chicago, so his family moved him out to Long Beach. Uh, but he said, after thinking about it, he said, I wish people would judge me by my character because I can adjust that. He said, I can't adjust my skin color. That is what it is. And, it, you know, he was like, it is. But my character, 
I can develop that. I can work on that. I can do, you know, and grow that. And, you know, he was telling me a story. He's like, man, I, I've been through it all. <laughs> in the streets of Chicago, trying to get out of it here in Long Beach. But I wish people would judge me by my character because I can change some stuff. So, you know, just that that in itself penetrated my heart. Like, man, because he looked at, he looked so sort of dejected because in his mind and his heart, they're judging me by my color. And that's how it's going to be. And most of our students say that's how it's going to always be. But I was asking them, like, how do you want to, again, how do you want to be judged? And then how do you judge others? So it's like, to me, it's a, I always think that it's a question, especially in a society that we're living in today, where, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, that's why it, I, I'm posing the question. Like, how do you want to be judged? And how do you think society or how do you think we as a people want to be judged? Is Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream outdated? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, is that, uh, you know, that was him. That's not us. That's the question. You know, how do we want to be judged today? Okay, well, very interesting. I have some things I want to touch on, but before I get started, I'm going to go to Professor Ra. I appreciate what's been said, if I understand correctly. It's son, very interesting perspective because at one time, Tom Bradley, Mm -hmm. I ran for governor um, about 82, 84. Same year Jesse Jackson ran for president. Mm -hmm. And he um, he said that he, he won the Democratic nomination. California mm -hmm. is a heavily Democratic. Yeah. So he really thought he was going to win. <laughs> but some of the Caucasians mm -hmm crossed over and voted for Duke Majin that mm. was in his party. Duke Majin that had no political experience. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was an attorney in Long Beach. But he beat Tom Bradley, mm. Duke Majin. And so Duke, uh, Bradley said, if I wasn't black, mm -hmm. I was the one. And those in the scholarship of Black people said no. If white people wasn't white, mm. <laughs> they're blaming the. You, they're getting you to blame yourself and mm. condemn yourself. <laughs> you understand? And, and sometimes, yeah. as you as you articulate your position, mm -hmm. you are uh, articulating a position of judgment. It's not about judgment; it's about treatment. Mm -hmm. Treat treatment to make you feel bad about yourself. And it's almost like the young man that said, I can't adjust my color. Why would you want to? Yeah. You know, why would you want to adjust your color to be accepted as a Yeah. No. You you don't care about people judging you, as Rashiki said. What mm -hmm. you care about is how they treat you, mm -hmm. especially within the concept of the distribution of goods and life-saving goods and services. Yes. And the administration of justice. Mm -hmm. We're talking about institution. Yeah. And cultural dynamics. Do you and have you condemning your color, which you never even called yourself black? <laughs> That's him. I'm Elijah Muhammad asked this question. Mm -hmm. Who is the original man and who is the colored man? Mm. And uh, most people say, well, we is the colored people and the European is the white man. That's what they used to call him, the man. Remember mm -hmm. that? Here comes the man. Here comes the man. <laughs> then the Honorable, Honorable, Lamont, uh, Honorable Elijah Muhammad changed that around. Yeah. He said, no, you, you as black people are the original man. Mm -hmm. And the white guy is the colored man because he colored people. <laughs> you know, now, all animals come in different hues. Is that right? Mm -hmm. If you spell human being with H-U-E, it means 
colored human beings. Mm -hmm. You means color. Yeah. <laughs> they take the E out and they call it human. Mm -hmm. Compound word. You generally means about a hookup. H U is just an annual uh, prefix for hookup. H up, hookup. Y'all hooking up, y'all coming together. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the issue is not your color. Mm -hmm. and when Martin Luther King said that, he was talking about that there were laws yeah. against a white girl and a white boy holding hands walking down the street. Mm -hmm. They were they were the choice of the people. And yeah. Mateo was killed because he just said hi to a white woman. Mm -hmm. It would cost you your life. Yeah. Because they wanted you to feel that we were killing you. Mm -hmm. You you they have you thinking they was killing you because you black, but no, it was killing you to deter you from ever miscegenating with white people. Mm -hmm. Because as Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, now I don't know. I think that if, if you read neither Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, mm -hmm. then you you that it's not about color. Mm -hmm. uh, being judged by the content of the color of the character. Mm -hmm. Even if you had good characters, LeBron James, when he moved into that house in Hollywood, they put get out and in on his on his garage. Yeah. Now you couldn't be more popular and more love. <laughs> the top five basketball teams were in all red states, Trump states, mm -hmm. but they were predominantly black players. Mm -hmm. The audience was predominantly white. Yeah, and they all cheered for them as long as it's entertainment, mm -hmm. sex, labor, and military, mm -hmm. and taxes. Those are the five things yeah. that they want Africans in America to be. Mm. The European is the one that needs to be judged by his color and his character, mm. not us. As you said, Martin Luther King was called a moral person. He's talking ethics and morals. Yeah. You know, here's Trump who is looked at as a savior of white people, not character of white people, yeah. of their race. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's why they worship him like he's a Jesus. He's saving yeah. white, the white race. Mm. He can do no wrong. Yeah. They ain't caught him doing all kinds of wrong. <laughs> and but they still, he still got 74 million people voted for him. Mm -hmm. Because that's their savior. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell you that. Yeah. We agree with his policy because his policy is racism. Mm -hmm. Racism could only be put by people in power. Mm -hmm. Rasha Key got an article, The Hierarchy of Racism. Mm -hmm. Who is the who is the hierarchy? Because I respond to your devastation, then you blame me. Mm -hmm. It's like burying a brother, head up, burying him with just his face up, sicking dogs on him. And then when he bite at the dog, you sneak up behind him and hit him in the head and said, fight fair. Mm -hmm. This is what they're doing to us. Yeah. Look at the disproportion of black people that's in prison that get out after being charged for 20 years and they were innocent. Mm. The disproportion. There's some white people. Mm. There's some white people that you can say they're good white people, but they still benefit from racism. Mm. If they're not fighting against it and organizing against it, and supporting people for reparations and supporting people for uh, 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 judge uh, people who care about human interaction, mm -hmm. then they can love you individually because you may be a great lover, because you may be a popular athlete, you may be a popular entertainer. So you're going to, you have, but they still benefit from being white. 
The abolitionists were fighting for black people, not for themselves. Mm -hmm. You understand? And so my point is, is that, yeah, I, I'm, I'm for, uh, most black people judge everybody by their character. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we got words for it, hey, man. He's a dog, man. He's a trip. He's a good guy. He's a that. He's a this. Uh, he's a good dude, man. He, he's all right. You understand? But it's the European that say, I don't care what your character is. This is about the salvation of my race. Mm. I'm going to paint Jesus in my color. I'm going to paint Allah in my color. I'm going to paint Buddha in my color. Mm -hmm. You understand? And that's his mentality. Yeah. You understand? So uh, my point is, is that, yeah, it's a good, why did the king even change? Mm -hmm. He said, these are some sick people. <laughs> <laughs> you know I've been to the mountaintop, <laughs> you and he started work. He started talking about war and poverty. Mm -hmm. and he started talking about you know uh, uh, labor and unions mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. And they said, "No, go back to just what you were talking about—civil rights. Mm -hmm. Don't get into the international struggle." So, you know, he, and he couldn't even interject morality yeah. into those things. Mm -hmm. that America was the biggest purveyors of violence. That's what he said. Yeah. And I'm just telling you that you can't say I'm suffering because I'm black mm -hmm. and I wish white folks would judge me by my character. Mm -hmm. How are they going to get to your character if they see you as black? Yeah. That's first. <laughs> Before mm -hmm. they even know you. Before you're even born, if your mom and daddy are black, you're going to be black. <laughs> you know, so you know they don't even give you a chance. They hate black babies. How the how the hell you you know gonna have character and you're a baby? <laughs> I just want you to see it from a standpoint of quit. They had a movie out, a sitcom out called Blackish. Mm -hmm. They don't never put out Jewish <laughs> or Chinese or Mexicanist. Mm -hmm. We could be too black though. Mm -hmm. A lot of black people want to get away from being black mm -hmm. when we as scholars have said, you know what black means? Excellence. Mm -hmm. It means excellence. And that's what we, 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 we teach. Yeah. You know, that's what your, your skin in, in, in what? What are you actually? You are the mothers and fathers of humanity. Mm -hmm. You understand? All the morals and ethics they talk about in the Constitution and even in the Bible came from Africa. Mm -hmm. African societies were practicing that way before organized European, Europeans took over religion and put the spirituality into what, what, uh, what they call a spiritual God. Mm -hmm. You understand? Versus deification of humans based on their character. They used to, God used to walk around on earth. Mm -hmm. They called deification. Him hotel was one based on his accomplishments and achievement. And God didn't mean uh, oh, the one that created earth, but it's one that created life understanding to, for people. Help, had them build and had them see themselves and make themselves distinct from as the animal kingdom. Mm -hmm. Moving from instinct to rationale mm -hmm. and all the way up to philosophy and ideology. First religions on this planet, the first church, the Ethiopian uh, um, church, uh, Coptic church, mm -hmm. uh, was the first church on this earth. You understand? And so, you know, we always had good character. Yeah. We trying to live on the planet, the European trying to rule the planet. Even if he has to destroy it, if he can't rule it, mm -hmm. and if he can't get money out of it, could you imagine charging people for water and air, and then causing people trying to come to your country alien? Mm -hmm. What if the Native American would have called him an alien and just killed him as soon as they saw him? Yeah, he wouldn't be here. But anyway, that's it, Rashi Keith. <laughs> All right, thanks, Professor Rod. Any response stuff. to that, Damien? No, no, no. I think it's it's uh I think like you said, because I was I was 
you know, I've posed this question across the board to a lot of folks. And, you know, it's, it's just, it's there. All right. So I think like what he said, um, uh, what I took away from what he was saying was, is that it's, uh, this is what I took away. It's not on us, but it's on them to get their act together. If I can summarize, that's, you know, to, for them to get past what they see and judge us by our character. Well, I, I can uh, I can diddle that because okay. we are in the situation because of the color construct. Yeah, we are in positions of disadvantage because of it. So mm -hmm. it is a large part of their responsibilities, or or whoever you want to call them, the system controllers, whatever, mm -hmm. for them to be able to become moral. Yeah, and 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 do some things that will value the the earth and the people that's on it. So yeah, I did all what you just said. Okay. okay, so now, brother Machinda, what's up? Go for it. <laughs> well, you guys, you know, you covered a lot of ground. It's hard. I, I, Professor Raza tell act to follow. You know. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, Pretty much, he pretty much spelled it out. Brother McCallum, welcome back. Appreciate you Thank coming you. on tonight. Um, you know, what you're doing with the kids is phenomenal. Um, you have your intentions are in your heart is in the right place. You continue to do what you do. Um, my response to your question is similar not similar, but piggybacking off what's already been said. Mm -hmm. um, you, was, you were quoting Martin Luther King. Of course, Professor Roth covered a lot of ground with that. You know, even, you know, so I think ideally speaking, ideally, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think I get what you're asking, what you're, what the, the question that you posed, mm -hmm. and you know, kind of like what you do with the, I know in previous podcasts, how you work uh, with the children, you know, preparing them for job interviews or yeah. that type of thing. Yeah, you want you 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 want to uh, shake some of the rust off of them, and you know the ones that are rough around the edges, and say, hey, <laughs> you know, you're going into that, and so you're you you you're, you're providing preparation for yeah. these young men and women who are preparing for a job, and mm -hmm. so you talk character. Yeah, character is very important. You know, it's very important. So you continue to teach that, continue to mentor those youths because you're doing a beautiful job doing it. But that question is, and I'm in agreement with what I heard from the previous people speaking in terms of, you know, like Martin Luther King, even he, as yeah. Professor Roth spelled out, you know, um, you know, at the at the end, Dr. King said. Yeah, he feel like he leading his people into a burning house. Mm. You know, after all of that, after yeah. all of that, can we all get along and we shall overcome? And you know, and 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 the quote that you made, you know, mm. the character of our sin, the, those quotes out of his speeches. Yeah, you know, I, we had the original album in my house. I listened to that. You know, mm. the "I Have a Dream" speech. You know, and 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 some people say that was his dream, but you know. And not disrespectfully, you know, because yeah. there's there's a lot of people have dreams and perspectives. However, you know, he put himself on the line, a martyr. You know, he died for a serious cause. But before he died, you know, he was back to the drawing board. Like he was like, man. So so my conclusion out of all that is, and through empirical evidence mm -hmm. that, and and it's not absolute. Because you'll meet people in life that will respect you. I don't mm -hmm. care what color they are. They will, you know, and those are the ones you receive, you send love back and you keep respect back, you know. Yeah. But as a whole, as like uh, Rasa T was saying, as a social construct, mm -hmm. people subscribe to a certain belief that they're superior to you, mm -hmm. that they're superior, and it's been pumped for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. And so we all know the history of slavery and all that, you know, and we can talk about that. So when this superiority situation 
has you know this superiority complex has been passed on gener you know, generationally. Um, it's bigger than just you know. I think that when we lack character, when we're yeah. acting a damn fool, when we're cutting up, smoking <laughs> crack, or whatever we do, you know what that is? I'm talking about on the average. Mm -hmm. That's just fallout from the social construct. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Brother Rossi Keith sent me a message, a text message about the school shootings. Mm -hmm. He said, and 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 and, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, give me a second because I want to just uh, read it. He says, school shootings is a byproduct of organized systemic structural insanity. Mm -hmm. And if you really understand what that means, I'm in total agreement because what happens is our children are not respected by the overall structure. Mm -hmm. People don't even want to live around you, Brother McCalman. Now they say, well, my Brother McCalman say, well, I live on the street where it's probably 99% white. Well, you know what? You know how to you know how to move through life. You conduct yeah. yourself well. You're not looking for any trouble. But 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 the ones, the, the kids that are gang banging and hanging out. Yeah. Man, I lived in Compton when nobody was gang banging. <laughs> yeah. It was nobody was game bang. We was riding our bicycles as little kids and having fun. I can be five or six years old and go for miles, and my mother don't even know yeah. where I'm at almost because it was a safe town. Mm -hmm. But what happens is, due to the abuse of policies, mm -hmm. Ronald Reagan was the governor of California. Yeah. And when they cut out those uh, after school programs and things like that, you know, I mean, so my point is. You know, like I say, I think I'm leading my people into a burning house. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, back to the drawing board. So what I'm saying is, it, it's, it, you know, so the fact that, you know, if people are acting out, you know, I say it's fallout from a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as how we conduct ourselves, it does have to be taught. And brothers like you are teaching it. You continue mm -hmm. to teach it. Continue to let them know who they are. Mm -hmm. People like Professor Ra, Rossi Key, whoever that, that that's spreading historical references and let you know knowing thyself and who we are as a people, yeah. what we're capable of doing. That's how we're going to build character is that we understand who we are and not only who we are, but we you know what we're capable of doing. And so that's not being taught. So if you look at the state of Florida, Governor DeSantis is an example. You got the fool in Texas, same thing, taking over the Houston school district, one of the biggest school districts in America. 200, you know, like, well, the bottom line is there's there's a push to say, hey, let's take out this history. Yeah. Let's not teach this history. Let's mm -hmm. not teach, you know, somebody, I was listening to somebody this morning. They talking about the Disney movie about Ruby Bridges, where mm -hmm. she went to, to a white school and she had to sit by herself. She couldn't even go in the cafeteria because she was going to be under attack. But yeah. still, you know, the Little Rock Nine, uh, the the I we, you know I can talk about the schools down here where cousins of mine who grew up where I'm at right now, people were throwing rotten eggs at them and things like that. The abuse, people are hateful because yeah. these and and then there you know we talk about Donald Trump. We're talking about this whole uh, movement of 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 it's like it's like you know like in the bar room or the dance. You hear the DJ say last call for alcohol. Mm -hmm. You know so if you partying out there. If you're going to get you a drink, so we're going to stop selling alcohol at, at, at 10, 11 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the morning. Last yeah. call. Well, this is their last call. This is their last. They understand that the party is just about over for them. Now, who is them? The ones that promote white supremacy and racism. Mm -hmm. That is not a conspiracy theory. Yeah. It's well documented. So it's, it's uh, brother... DX was on there talking about we're in a dimensional shift and, it, and, and we're going into another uh, dimension. Well, mm -hmm. I won't talk about that. I'll leave that to Brother DX. I understood what he was talking about because I, I understand that. But the point is, um, I worked, let me put it this way. I worked with, I worked in, I worked with gangs, you know, mm -hmm. on the high level uh, uh, back in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. And I was privy to a lot of different things in terms of uh, information. I had a I had a phone number 
to the Ku Klux Klan. Imperial mm. Wizard, Tom Mester, was the Imperial Wizard of San Diego County. Mm-hmm. And I was able to dial that number. There was a recording. And then on that recording, he made reference to their birth rate. That, damn, we're diminishing. We're not having babies anymore. We're almost out of here. White supremacy. We got to keep our blue eyes and, and blonde hair. And, and, and But a lot of people that, I'm going to just say this and I'm going to close. But a lot of people, white, who say, oh, I ain't racist. Oh, I ain't part of that. I'm not for it. I'm not no Klansman. And they might not be a Klansman. But if you look at, if you read Dr. D, Dr. Robin D, Dr. Robin D'Angelo, mm-hmm. uh, what is it called? Uh, white Fragility. She wrote a book. She talked about white people who are complicit. They might not be practicing clan members, but they turn a blind eye. They're not. They're not. They're not standing up for you. Mm-hmm. We. It, 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 not to say we can't make it without their support, but it'll so speed it up. If if white folks who claim to be cool with us uh, would actually speak up and get involved in marches, and you see whites marching and all that kind of stuff, but not on a not on a serious national scale. If, if they, I work with folks, and they talk real nice to me. Hey, you know, how's it going? But they will not get involved. They don't want to be called nigger lovers, or, or mm-hmm. you know, or they don't want to be a part of that. So what I'm saying is, they don't want white flight happen all over America. Mm-hmm. I was living in Compton. I had a, I had real estate broker live across the street from my house. Had his own business. Had a dentist at the corner. Had another doctor in the middle of the block. Had a lawyer. My best friend's daddy was in the next block. Hmm. Uh, we had we had well-to-do black people in Compton when I was a little bitty kid growing up, five, six, seven, eight years old. Yeah. And so, and and but look, during that time, because blacks were allowed to move into Compton, mm-hmm. well, white folks got out of Compton. Why did they run from us? We yeah. were we were law-abiding citizens, professionals. But guess what? They don't want to be around you. Yeah. And I don't want to be absolute and say 100% that all of them don't want to be around you, but it's promoted. It's a social construct. Yeah. And so what I'm saying is that's why color is involved in this because they're, 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 they're threatened by more than just your color, mm-hmm. your melanin, your, 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 your supernatural uh, capabilities. And not that we're going around boasting like we're Superman. But we do have some serious qualities within us. You know, we dominate. We're a dominating type of people. And we don't have to weaponize it. We just are who we are. However, they know this. And it's no secret to them. A lot of times, I like to think that they know us better than we know ourselves, <laughs> especially in these modern times. So that's why, it's, you know, so the young children who say they they messing with me because my color. Well, that's how they communicate it. They're just saying my color. They, they, they might say a few words, just like when they text mess, they use lowercase letters, and mm-hmm. misspelled words, and all kind of uh, shortcuts. Yeah. That's how they, you know, that's, that's, but that's the same thing when they say, uh, yeah, they hate that because I'm black or whatever. You know, it's not a chip on their shoulder. It may yeah. appear that way, but it's not. It's not. They're feeling the same reverberated white supremacy that adults feel but they can't explain it they can't break it down and what happens is they're not mentally developed to cope with it and deal with it and 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 and, and, and but when the black panthers was around when dr rob was a youngster out there raising hell at an yeah. early age i'm just telling you that yeah. we were developed because we, we 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 had matters and we had character but i'm just saying the bottom line is it's the whole Attack! It's an attack. It's been an attack to Cointel Pro, all the other programs. Let's dismantle, mm-hmm. you know, what is it? The Willie Lynch letters, yes. uh, whatever. Let's mm-hmm. let's dismantle this. Let's slow their progress. Let's mm-hmm. destroy them. Let's incarcerate them. I worked for over 10, 12 years in criminal justice. Mm-hmm. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I've seen it. Empirical evidence how. Black people get treated in the system, so it's not a so yeah. so that's what I'm saying. But so anyway, I just wanted to share that because these kids 
they can't communicate. Mm. They can't. They, they, some of them don't have the ability. They have the ability. They have the potential, but they're not communicating. So they'll say, "Yeah, you know, yeah, we whatever." You know, they they're despondent. They right. as as generations move forward, the only reason why I'm still standing because I had somebody. I had a strong background. I had people. I was. I was. I had people like uh, the, uh, Professor Ra saying, "Come on, man, let's move. Let's ha- let's show pride. Let's you know." But it's died down, you know, yeah. because it's it's a it's a direct attack. It's an intentional program to make you feel the way you make people feel the way they feel, and make them feel inferior and all of that. But it's our job to let people know that not only you're not inferior. Mm-hmm. I hate to say it, but what I'm not don't mean this braggly and narcissistic and egotistical, but you are superior. You're superior in a lot of ways. Look, uh, you know, we can use sports as an analogy. We can look at golf and tennis. Man, they didn't let us in those games. When we get in those games, we dominate folks because we we have a free spirit and we we learn and we know how to learn. And because we're the original teachers, we're the we, we you know, but. They they use that against us because it's a competition. I was first, or they they changed the history and say they were first. Hippocrates versus Imhotep or whatever. And you know, and my, my grandpa was a cowboy and he just and Christopher Columbus discovered America. All these lies. Why all the lies? Why don't you tell it like it is? Because you know what? I'm gonna be done with that. So anyway, I just had to go off on that tangent, you know, just to express that. But the but it does not negate what you're doing, Brother McCalman. You keep doing what you're doing, educating people, preparing them for interviews, teaching character, because and reminding them that, hey, and you don't have to tell them, hey, you're you're superior. Mm-hmm. They're gonna realize that they're superior when their self-esteem is up. When they when they're gonna realize that, hey, I'm capable. You know, because people like you are on the front line trying to make a difference. You headed to Lock High School. You know, come on, man. You're in the city, man. You're trying to do it. I do it every day. I pull people over every day in the hallway and bust their heads wide open. Mm-hmm. I'm done. Thank you, Brother McCallum, for your presentation tonight. No, I thank you. I think this is the first time I heard you actually open and share my first time. So I, I was just uh, sitting back and just enjoying everything that you had to say. And uh, like you said, I think it's... Um, and I was gonna say, I think, like you said, with our students, when they say it, like my my heart is that they don't use it as an excuse. You know what I mean? Like, without really, really knowing, uh, like, oh, they're treating me this way because I'm black. And I'm like, okay, you don't even, you know, like I hear that a lot in my schools, but it's like, do we know? Like, I'm always pushing them to say, do we know? Do you know? Tell me the situation. What transpired? versus I'm black so that's how they treat me you know so I'm always trying to get them to dive deeper into it uh and it seems like they don't want to go deeper but then they'll just use it as their sort of as their I think they're using it as their crutch versus like you said when other people used it or didn't even use it but used it because it was their reality and I, I'm always trying to get our youth to say, okay, is it your reality or is it just your crutch right now? And because you're throwing it out. And it's like, that's why, you know, when I'm asking these questions to them, it's like, you know, what do you want to be judged by? And, you know, cause like I was thinking, I was telling some of them, like, like we said it tonight, like when I walk in the room, of course, you're going to see me as a black man. That's everybody. Uh, but I don't want you to come to a conclusion about me before you ever get to know me. You know what I mean? And that could be across any race. It could be within our own race too sometimes, but it's like, you know, like you said, trying to push them to develop their character, push them to develop their skills so that when they get in those rooms and even if they are being judged negatively, uh, my character is going to show you something different. And hopefully that can, you know, set you up for success. But no, I appreciate everything that you said, Brother Machinda. That was that was some good stuff. All right. Let me chime in just a little bit here. So I'm I'm li- listening to what you guys are saying. And um, 
I, I uh, tend to look at value systems, mm -hmm. how we're we're inheriting our env environmental value systems. Mm -hmm. And like you said, when you come in the room, the value system that's being taught is to first look at you mm -hmm. that you are black. So that's yeah. the value system is colorism. Yeah. Oh. And so with what we're doing, and and I think the, my goal, along with I think other people's goals, <laughs> is to start, you can identify somebody by their skin color, you know, there are features and all of that, just identification. Mm -hmm. But when you deal with them, then you start formulating how their character is. It's, it's uh, the approach of your value system. Mm -hmm. We 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 tend to learn this to see color. It's, yeah. it's a learned thing. Mm -hmm. But another thing with that, you say character or color, we cannot help how we were formulated. Yeah. Nobody can. But we can help how we act. Mm -hmm. Your your behavior, your attitude is your your character. Mm -hmm. You could like the boy was saying that he can adjust his behavior. Yeah. And that's the truth. We can we could become more literate and wise mm -hmm. if we choose to seek learning yeah. and, and pay attention to lessons being presented all in front of us all the time. Mm -hmm. We can learn from that. We just got to pay attention. Yeah. And so, of course, you know, I would like to be valued by mm -hmm. my character, not my color, because I can't help that. Yeah. <laughs> So I just, that's something I could add to it. And then one more thing before I, I close, as Brother Mishinda said, we have a mindset and we're learning. If, if, you, if you're into learning, mm -hmm. that a lot of people say this, things are not going to change. Mm -hmm. So if you ascribe to that to that type of mindset, mm -hmm. you be you're forming an absolute thought process of this is always going to be the way it's going to be. Mm -hmm. But I choose to have what I would call an optimal or approaching an optimal type of mindset, where not only can I become better, but my environment too, mm -hmm. and I don't ascribe to. It's always going to be like this. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, you know, it's absolute that none, none of these things are going to change. So I think we, we as, as people have to, to learn how to be more optimistic. And I'm still learning to be. Yeah. And, and start making adjustments. You know, you, you've learned what you've learned. But what else can you learn? And, and and then what you have learned and what you have adopted, can you start making adjustments to that? Mm -hmm. To be, to get a better outcome or have a constructive outcome yeah. in your in your actions. So I'm gonna stop right there and, and let you uh conclude. Me? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, well, not put your, your final thoughts. Okay, yeah. Final or, thought. or your concurring thoughts. So <laughs> <laughs> No, I think like you said, I think it's learn. Because I was thinking about my, my children today, you know, 10, 7, and 5. My daughter, she she's more of a she likes the color. So she recognizes skin color, right? So she knows that I'm darker than she is. Uh and she so if she's coloring the family, uh I'm she, you know, she's bringing colors to me. Okay, this is you. This is Dylan. Uh, her and Ethan, my oldest, they're probably the same color. They're lighter than me and their mom. So we're almost like a 
Rainbow or Brown, but she recognizes that, whereas the boys don't, or they don't say so. You know what I mean? When they're drawing us and cutting us, it's just whatever it is. Uh, but they recognize and they say when we're out and about, Daddy, why is that person in a wheelchair? Daddy, why does that person, uh, you know, physical things? They they recognize the wheelchair. They recognize crutches. They, they recognize all these things, but I've never heard them say, Daddy, why is that person a different skin color than me? You know what I mean? And it's like, because we haven't talked. We haven't probably taught them that, even though they went to school when they were in school with, you know, majority Hispanic. They never came back and said, you know, why am I the only one who looks like me in my class? But, Daddy, why is that boy in the wheelchair? Daddy, why does that boy talk like that? You know what I mean? So I think, like you said, once it's taught, it's just, it's there. And I think, like, for me, the way my mom taught me and raised me uh, was... This is society, but that's not how you have to roll in. You got to know some stuff, but that's not how you have to conduct your life, right? So uh, I take on that and I try to teach, you know, my children and even our youth that idea. But then it's like, um, how can we, I think Dr. King said uh, in, in this, another speech too, both superiority and inferiority are sin. Like that blew me away. So he was talking to the, you know, them man, at the time, whoever. Uh, and I think like how um, Brother Machinda said, uh, he said, I feel like I'm leading my people into a burning house. You know, is the house still burning today? Or um yeah, sometimes you got to, you know what I mean, to get to where you want to go. I mean, I know he knew that because uh, he, he was on the front lines for real. And, you know, my thought is always, is the house still burning today? Uh, can we, it's not easy. It's still, it's still stuff going on out there. But can we approach it differently? And like you said, starting with us, and then, you know, hopefully they got to approach it differently, whoever they are, the man, you know, differently too. But I think if we go at it from the, I try to view people by character. You know what I mean? Like my friends, I was thinking about, I have a teacher at in Long Beach who's Caucasian. From all signs, we could be best friends. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like character wise, we could be best friends. Why wouldn't I make him my friend? You know what I mean? But is it, you know, some people say, well, he's a, he's a white guy who grew up, you know, in this part of the town. Yeah, it don't matter. He's character wise. We could be friends. And I think if we lead with that, I think, you know, I don't know. I think I, I just think life would be better for everyone involved. And of course, everybody has to lead with that, too. You know what I mean? Like, I think Dr. King, if he's the, if he was the moral leader, he's trying to lead with that. But he's fighting against people who aren't doing it. I guess that's why he had the dream. But then, like you said, the frustration, the fight, the battles, the, the uphill battles and climbs. Is it worth it? You know, what I mean, my thought is, yeah, it's worth it. Because if we can get everybody to think brotherhood life would be good, but that's a battle. Well, you said something there when you said inferior, inferiority and superiority. Mm -hmm. That, I think, uh, we can look at that when it comes to your character. Yeah. Um, how you are character wise mm -hmm. and you could it could be measured by yeah. the results of your actions and we all should acquire a superior character mm -hmm. and the best person that you could be yeah. regardless to the how you how you came out mm -hmm. 
and and that would be dealing on a higher level of thinking and interacting I, that that would be good because if you're if you're acting in an inferior way mm -hmm. it's just going to become more destructive 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 mm -hmm. and uh this is why we are in the position we are today because of inferiority type thinking mm -hmm. where you all where you where it's your thoughts is that you are a more superior type person versus that you just you just are a person mm -hmm. and that's where the systematic white supremacy racism is at fault yeah it's, it's at fault because of thinking that you're superior mm -hmm. when you're really not because your thought process is mm -hmm. inferior yeah. because of the results not about what you say it's the results the tearing down of the environment mm -hmm. the destruction of people um and then the competitors mm -hmm. uh, i'm looking at democracy now before we came on here today and you look at is that North Korea, Yung Kan King, whatever his name is, Jung Chang, mm -hmm. that dude, <laughs> him and his soldier dudes with these big nuclear warheads. Yeah. What is all that about? The yeah. oh, you want to you want to be protected from this other person that's doing that? Mm -hmm. I understand that, but taking on that personality is just further damaging. Yeah. Now. You know, so it's just it's just the mindset of of world leaders and the system. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just totally that's inferior, if you ask to me, because mm -hmm. it's all about destruction and jockeying for power. So yeah, I just was that was a few thoughts with that inferiority and and superiority. Yeah. Now, brother Machinda been sending some messages. Do you want to speak some more, brother Machinda, or what? <laughs> no man I, I, I'm already spoken brother appreciate it alright so brother McCallman yes sir excellent topic um, it's, it's very good food for thought mm -hmm. anybody that listens to this and uh, you know we want you back because <laughs> <laughs> you always go bring something that's that's interesting and and uh it's we need to discuss it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Definitely you. do. So I appreciate you, man. And uh so so next week we have a, a colleague of mine that's coming on. We work together at the school, and he has a nickname that he's gonna go by, Wild Bill. He said that was his father's nickname. So we're going to roll with that and I'm going to interview him. So that'll be very interesting. So I'm looking forward to that. And then uh, I don't know for sure if we have a guest for Monday for Conscious Corner, but I know Professor Ra had a few people lined up and uh, anybody that's interested can come on the website and see what, what guests we're going to have. It should be updated by Friday or Saturday, something like that. Nice. So appreciate you, Brother McCallum. Same here. Same here. And uh, we're going to take our pause. And I'm going to say each one teach one in Conscious Corner. Brother, have a good evening. And thanks for coming. Yes, sir.